Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to English 454. Uh, in the previous lecture, we have discussed what all Wordsworth had to say about poetry, his nature, what it was his definition of uh, poetry, what was according to him was the nature of the poetry, what was according to him the role of uh, a poet in a society was, and what was the uh, function of poetry that has to be achieved in a society, whether the poet has any role at all or not. Uh, we discussed that he believed that the poetic process uh, has uh, three basic phases. The first phase was that of notable experience, that you have to have, you have to observe something that would create certain emotions in you. That observation or that notable experience is then contemplated upon. The contemplation process has to be long and it has to be deep. Because we know a poet, according to Wordsworth, would be a person who has to think long and deep. He would be a person with organic sensibility, but the organic sensibility in itself would not be enough. There has to be a process of contemplation involved there and the contemplation process has to be long and deep. He could not be a person who's impulsive and he could not be a person who, you know, who's uh, superficial. He has to think about things deeply. He has to observe and analyze their nature. He has to analyze the emotions he is feeling as well. So after the process of contemplation, then there is this process of uh, tranquility that comes with it. The state of tranquility has to be achieved by the poet. The state of tranquility means that he is in a state of relaxed emotion. The emotions are not charged up as they would have when the first experience was, um, when, it, when it occurred. So when the uh, it, state of tranquility is achieved, and then there is this recollection of the notable experience. And while you're recollecting the notable experience, there has to be certain um, emotions, jo that recollection has to come. The same sort of emotion has to come. Sare emotions recollect in the state of tranquility, then uh, you can have poetry. Like in words, but Kethik, it's not as simple as that. Before you have this re spontaneous overflow of um, a powerful feelings and you recollect in tranquility, there has to be something else that you have to consider. And that something else would be the impression. You have to focus on the sensibility. Okay? Sensibility kya he says all human beings have this sensibility. Har ek ke paas ye senses hain. But in a poet, we have this organic sensibility a little uh, more than usual. Uski thoi si sensibility is heightened hongi. Ab ye sensibilities kya cheez hain? Ye sensibilities, these are your senses, which would form the impression. In the case of a notable experience, you need to have these sensibilities. To wo cheez jo hai, wo aapke andar uh, ek impression form karegi. To us impression ke base pe, you'll have those feelings. To ab sensibilities ignore So there has to be the sensibility and then there is the feeling. So when words will say that emotions or feelings the base of poetry, it's the essence of poetry, it's the basic spirit of poetry, agreed. But he also say that you need to have organic sensibility as well for the process of creation of poetry at least. End of poetry mein koi shak hai ki it has to give pleasure and it has to give rise to certain sort of feelings. But for the process of poetry to take place, for the process of poetic creation at least, there has to be this, uh, these two things together. That you have to have these impressions formed by the senses and the impressions then will cause the, uh, the, the powerful flow of uh, feelings, the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Okay, okay. Now, after that, he does not stop there. He does not say that if you have two things, then you will create a good poetry. He has added a third thing. He has said that you do not need only these two things. You need a logical, calm mind as well. You have to have a calm mind. If you do not have a calm mind, um, the calm mind uh, would not... Uh, if the mind is agitated or excited, it would not help you in uh, detaching your emotions and feelings from the experience. In order to detach your feelings and emotions from the fe uh, uh, emotions from the experience, you need to have a calm mind. Aapka mind un chizon ko detach karega, ta ke apos experience ko analyze kar sake. Aur uske baad bhi wo agar experience exist kar raha hai aapke dimag mein, un feelings or emotions ko hata ke bhi, to then it is worth being produced into poetry. Usne ye cheez bar bar preface to lyrical ballad mein focus kiya hai is cheez pe ki poetry is essentially based on feelings. It's essentially based on emotions. Lekin ye emotions or feelings kaise hongi jo ke automatically overflow kar jayengi, jo automatically they would come out of you. It's not something that you'd force yourself to feel. It's not something that you're going to, you know, push yourself to feel. They would come out. If you have the desired ability, if you have the desired tools in you, if the thing, if you're genetically makeup uh, like that, if you have the desired faculties, it would come out of you. 
it would it would spontaneously overflow out of you theek hai aapko poetry ke liye you do not need to push yourself for it it would come out of you aur isi wajah se wo kehta hai ki jo bhi poetical experience hoga it's going to be natural you cannot force it you cannot constrain it you cannot restrict it things have to go have to take their natural course aap artificially laid pipes mein poetry ko nahi bhej sakte bhej sakte it's it flows freely it flows clearly it has to be pure jab emotion itne strong honge us experience ke us mein natije mein then and only then poetry would be produced and when the poetry would be produced you would not have to you know do something to produce it it would come out naturally aur uske liye fir aapko language bhi forcefully nahi lani padegi but poetic poetry would choose its own language if it's natural if it's pure it would have a natural language it would have natural poetic diction it was the language it would be the language of poetic creation acha तो अब जो क्वेश्चन uh, इसमें अराइज होता है प्रीफेस में बार बार वो ये होता है कि व्हाई डज ही नीड टू राइट दिस प्रीफेस व्हाट वाज द नीड ही फेल दैट ही हैज टू राइट दिस प्रीफेस तो उसका वो जवाब बार बार देता है और वो ये है कि ही इज डूइंग समथिंग ओरिजिनल ही इज डिविएटिंग फ्रॉम द डाउन ट्रोडन पार्थ जो कि आमतौर पर लोग जो लिख रहे थे एंड वेन ही इज डूइंग समथिंग डिफरेंट ही हैज टू ही फील्स दिस नीड दैट ही नीड्स टू एक्सप्लेन हिमसेल्फ ही नीड्स टू जस्टिफाई by what he is doing he is he is deviating from the path na he is doing something out of the normal he is doing something extraordinary he is doing something original something that has not been done before to uske liye usko kya karna padega he has to think uh, about how people are going to take it he has to make the people of uh, make the minds of people ready to receive what he is what he is written he has to create a context he has to provide um, an atmosphere for his poetry to be well received aur uske liye he has written this preface is preface mein इसने ना सिर्फ अपनी पोइट्री की डेफिनेशन दी है कि व्हाई व्हाट ही थिंक्स पोइट्री इज उसने पोइट्री की नेचर बताई है उसने पोइट्री का फंक्शन बताया है उसने बताया कि पोइट्रिकल प्रोसेस क्या होता है ही आल्सो टेल्स यू कि उसके ख्याल में कि पोइट किस तरह का आदमी होना चाहिए व्हाट काइंड ऑफ अ पर्सन ही वुड बी व्हाट शुड बी द क्वालिटीज प्रेजेंट इन अ पोएट व्हाट वुड बी द प्रोसेस इन्वॉल्व इन द क्रिएशन ऑफ पोइट्री व्हाट वुड बी द रोल प्लेड बाय द पोएट इन अ सोसाइटी और इज देयर अ रोल प्लेड बाय द पोएट इन द सोसाइटी पोइट्री का कोई फंक्शन है पोइट्री का कोई एंड है पोइट्री का कोई पर्पस है ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन ही आंसर्स ही नॉट ओनली आंसर्स अबाउट द सब्जेक्ट मैटर ही नॉट ओनली डिलिब्रेट्स ऑन दैट बट ही ऑल्सो डिलिब्रेट्स ऑन द फंक्शन ऑफ पोइट्री एज वेल ऑन द लैंग्वेज यूज बाय द पोइट्री कि किस तरह की लैंग्वेज यूज होनी चाहिए ही ऑल्सो डिस्कस वेदर दे इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन द लैंग्वेज ऑफ प्रोज और पोइट्री ही डिस्कस वेदर दे शुड बी डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सब्जेक्ट मैटर्स ऑफ प्रोज एंड पोइट्री वेदर द लैंग्वेज शुड बी ऑफ अ स्पेशल काइंड वेदर दे शुड बी special words used for poetry whether there should be special subject matters that can be used in poetry and are feelings important in poetry is there a room for emotion is there a room for interpretation is it subjective is it objective everything he discusses every question that might come into our mind regarding poetry is addressed by wordsworth when he writes this preface to लिरिकल बैलेट वो बेसिकली वो टेस्ट लोगों का क्रिएट करना चाह रहा है ताकि लोग उसकी पोइट्री को वेल रिसीव करें ताकि वो जो अचीव करना चाह रहा है इस पोइट्री से वो वो अचीव कर सके तो द वे वी द पॉइंट वे वी स्टॉप लास्ट टाइम वॉज हिज सब्जेक्ट मैटर कि वो फंक्शन क्या बता रहा था अपनी पोइट्री का उसने क्या बताया था कि वाई डिड ही चूज दिस रस्टेक लाइफ ही एडिड दिस इमेजिनेशन द कलर ऑफ इमेजिनेशन टू द रस्टेक लाइफ वट वॉज द रीजन ऑफ एडिंग दैट कलर so he says that wordsworth found some meaning in human life if human beings lived in close proximity to nature and allowed it would begin its influence to sink into their soul why did he choose the rustic life why did he choose the common man's life why did he choose the life of the village people uska jawab usne bilkul shuru mein diya hai and i have already told you that he believes ki jo rustic life hai jo aam insaan ki zindagi hai wo simpler hai it's it's as compared to the city life uh the passions are simple the emotions are simpler they don't have the ambition they don't have the greed they don't have the materialistic inclinations that the people of city would have of cities would have so he believes that in order to that by focusing on the people living in the village or in the countryside they're going to make things easier for people to understand what kind of uh, 
uh, what kind of a, what kind of a life should be led what kind of emotions should people have so he says that when people live in close proximity to nature when they live close to the natural inhabitants when they live close to the streams and the woods and the fields then they let that nature sink in them jitni nature simple hai utni unki zindagi simple hoti jayegi utni zyada wo apni zindagi ke soul searching karenge the nature would bring you closer to life to the meaning of life to god itself um they would begin to influence and sink into the soul not only the personality would change but they that the soul would calm down the soul would be peaceful it would not be the agitated soul of a person living in the city he thought that oral elevation and spiritual edification of man was not possible in the humdrum life of town and cities ये बात हम बहुत दफ़ा सुनते हैं कि सिटी लाइफ इज़ वेरी फास्ट पीपल लिविंग इन सिटीज़ दे हैव टू रश दे वेक अप इन द मॉर्निंग एंड दे गो टू बेड इन द नाइट एंड दे डोंट नो व्हाट हैपेंस ड्यूरिंग द डे उनकी जिंदगी बहुत जल्दी चलती है शहरों में जिंदगी तेज़ है और जब जिंदगी तेज़ है उसकी इतनी डिमांड्स हैं यू हैव टू यू हैव टू कैच अप यू हैव टू डू सो मैनी थिंग्स यू हैव टू पे सो मैनी बिल्स यू हैव टू रीच टू सो मैनी प्लेसेज जैसे छोटा शहर है ना उसमें एक जगह से दूसरी जगह जाने के लिए ज़्यादा टाइम नहीं लगता सड़कों पर इतना रश नहीं होता अब अगर आप एक बड़े शहर में रहते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल लाहौर या कराची में रहते हैं तो आपको अपने घर से अपनी वर्क प्लेस तक जाते जाते यू हैव टू फेस ट्रैफिक यू हैव टू यू नो यू विल स्टक इन ट्रैफिक सम टाइम्स यू हैव टू पास सो मच डिस्टेंस यू हैव टू कवर सो मच डिस्टेंस एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम लाइक द यू नो द वे पीपल आर nowadays they are all angry and they all irritated and you most of the time you fight with someone on your way to the office or coming back from the office so ye cheeze jo hongi ye nahi hongi ek chote shahar mein ye chote shahar se ab gaon mein chale jaate to ye to bilkul hi nahi hongi kyunki wahan pe to ye highway expressway underpass or flyover is tarah ki cheeze hi nahi hai ab jahan pe ek seedhi sadak ke bajaye three lane sadak banegi phir three lane sadak se six lane sadak ban jayegi sadak six lane sadak ke baad uske upar ek flyover aa jayega phir uske niche se ek underpass guzar jayega it means ki itna sada rush ho gaya hai और ज़िंदगी की ज़रूरतें बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ती जा रही हैं तो जो लोग इस एटमॉस्फेयर में रहेंगे वो लोग तो जाहिर है उनकी सोल उनकी पर्सनालिटी उनकी उनकी ज़िंदगी बहुत एजिटेटेड नहीं हो जाएगी बहुत ज़्यादा इरिटेटेड हो जाएगी बहुत ज़्यादा स्ट्रेस्ड होगी बिकॉज दे हैव टू दे हैव टू डू सो मैनी थिंग्स इन सो लिटल टाइम ठीक है और वो चूँकि बहुत से और लोग भी उनके साथ उसी शहर में रह रहे हैं जो कि उनसे बेहतर रह रहे होंगे जिनके पास उनसे बेहतर गाड़ियाँ होंगी जो उनसे बेहतर जो उनसे बेहतर घरों में रह रहे होंगे जो उनसे बेहतर कपड़े पहन रहे होंगे तो इतने लोगों को जब अपने इर्द गिर्द देखेंगे तो उनकी आ, उनकी जो पर्सनालिटी जो उनकी जान है ना उस पर डिमांड्स बढ़ जाएंगे तो ये जो होता है कि आपने व्हेन यू व्हेन यू नीड टू डेवलप योर सोल व्हेन यू नीड टू यू नो इन टच गेट इन टच विद योर विद योर विद योर इनर सेल्फ दिस इज नॉट पॉसिबल इन दिस हम ड्रम लाइफ इन दिस फास्ट गोइंग लाइफ इन दिस लाइफ इन द फास्ट लेन यू कैन डू दैट बिकॉज आप तो उसमें आपको सोचने का मौका ही नहीं मिल रहा उसमें तो आपको रुकने का मौका नहीं मिल रहा यू आर मूविंग फ्रॉम वन place to another you your time is all divided up your life is all compartmentalized whatever you have has to be done um if it has to be paid for it has to be done by this time uh, and it has to be you have to eat by this time you have to pay the bill by this time you have to get up at this time you have to reach back by this time you have to pick the kid up at this time all compartmentalized you don't have the time to think about life to think about yourself to think about what you need you you can't break free from the race this is a rat race that you're running so words would say is that people who live near the nature do not follow the rat race they uh, they automatically they they calm down they slow down and if you have experienced it i have experienced it myself that if you live in a small city or even if you live in these uh, northern areas or if you, if you live in mari zindagi aista khud hi saista ho jati hai yakdam and you, you calm down halanki kaam to aap wohi kar rahe hote hain sare आपने उसी तरह ऑफिस जाना होता है आपने उसी तरह सुबह उठ के तैयार होना है खाना बनाना है कपड़े धोने हैं कपड़े इस्तरी करने सब कुछ करना है पर जिंदगी आहिस्ता हो जाती है सम हाउ द पेस स्लोज डाउन एंड व्हेन यू हैव द स्लो पेस यू नॉट इन अ हरी यू यू डू गेट टाइम टू सेट and you know think sit back and think about what you're doing why you're doing it why you're here the basic philosophical questions to ye jo philosophical questions hain ye ye jo analysis self analysis hai ye this questioning of your inner self the searching of your inner self the soul searching is not possible according to words with in the city life you get near to the nature your soul it sinks into your soul it calms it down and it makes it ready to receive 
اس کا انٹینا اس کو اس کے انٹینا کو کھڑا کر دیتی ہے اب اس فریکوینسی پہ آ جاتے ہیں جب آپ کو وہ باتیں سمجھ آ سکتی ہیں جس کے لیے آپ کو بنایا گیا ہے رستک پیپل لیڈ ا لائف آف پرائمل سمپلسٹی ان کانسٹنٹ کمیونیکیشن ود نیچر بیکاز نیچر از دی رولنگ فورس ان اے ولیج اور بیکاز ان کی زندگی نیچر کی ریوالو کری ہوتی ہے بیکاز دے گیٹنگ دے فوڈ فرام نیچر دے گیٹنگ ایوری تھنگ فرام نیچر ان کے لیے بازار کوئی ڈپارٹمنٹل اسٹور نہیں ہے جہاں سے جا کے کھانا لے کے آئیں گے وہ کھانا اگائیں گے تو وہ کھانا کھائیں گے دے ہیو ٹو ڈریس اپ سو دے آر یو نو دے کین پروٹیکٹ دم سیلس فرام نیچر بیکاز جہاں پہ گرمی ہے وہاں پہ پھر ان کو وہ گرمی بھی فیل ہو رہی ہے وہ بڑی بڑی اسکائی اسکریپرز میں نہیں رہتے وہ بڑی بڑی اپارٹمنٹ بلڈنگس میں نہیں رہتے جہاں پہ سارا دن چاروں جون کے مہینے میں بھی اٹس آل سینٹرلی ایئر کنڈیشن اینڈ یو ڈونٹ فیل واٹ دا کلائمیٹ از لائک آؤٹ سائڈ دے ہیو ٹو فیس دا سمر اینڈ دے ہیو ٹو فیس دا ونٹر دے وڈ بی observing the coming and going of the seasons they would observe the sunrise and they would observe the sunset they'd be close to nature unko pata hai ki suraj bhi koi cheez hai aur suraj nikalta kitne baje hai aur doobta kitne baje hai aur chand bhi nikalta hai sitara bhi nikalta hai they'll they'll be able to recognize the north star they'll be able to recognize mercury they'll be able to recognize venus jab woh chamak raha hai they'll know ke is star ko jo hai musafir follow karte they know subah ka sitara as well they know these things they're close to nature and they are a part of nature nature affect karti hai unki har cheez ko unke mahinon ke naam agar aap sunenge to wo bhi nature se inspired hain unki unki jo tehwar hain wo bhi nature se inspired hain nature is an important part and nature is basically the force behind life so people who are close to nature are close to life he decided to deal with lives of cadgers and rustic instead of politicians and statesmen stupefied with victory and intoxicated with glory and power So glory, power, victory intoxicate the man, corrupts it, makes it degenerate and it, it's something that should be kept away from human by a human being because it does not benefit a human uh, in any way. So jo aam insaan hai, uske liye in cheezon ki koi importance nahi hoogi, wo in cheezon ko ignore karega, wo in cheezon ke peechhe nahi bhaagega. Jabki jo politicians hai, statesmen hai, member of Qami Assembly hai, member of national, wo kya kehte hai? کیا کہتے ہیں پروینشل اسمبلی ہے یہ لوگ جو ہیں سارے دے دے آل رننگ آفٹر دیز تھنگس ایک الیکشن جیتیں گے تو اگلے الیکشن کی فکر پڑ جائے گی پھر بیٹے کو الیکشن میں کھڑا کرنا ہے پھر بیٹے کی جو آگے جہاں پہ شادی کرنی ہے وہ ایسا خاندان ہونا چاہیے جو کہ اس پولیٹیکلی اسٹرانگ ہو اٹ گوز آن اینڈ آن اینڈ آن سو وہ ان کی زندگی اس چیز کے گرد ریوالو کرتے دے وانٹ مور گلوری دے وانٹ مور وکٹری دے وانٹ مور پاور اٹس نیور اناف اٹس نیور اناف فار دیم دا ویلتھ از نیور اناف دا پاور از ناٹ اناف He refuses to glorify lives of kings and princes and men belonging to the highest threat of society. He completely classical poetry se differ kar jata hai yahan pe. Kyunki classical poetry ye tragedy jo thi usme jo protagonist hote the ya agents hote the ya characters hote the wo hamesha royalty mein se hote the ya nobility mein se hote the. Unki life ko portray kiya jata tha. Unki life ko example banaya jata tha. He does not want to glorify them. He does not think they are important enough. He does not think that they are human enough to be a specimen of humanity, to be discussed as a specimen of humanity, to be able to lead other people, to tell other people uh, what kind of lives should be led because they themselves don't know what the real meaning of life is and how to lead it. Because in their lives he found an artificiality that he despised. He does not, uh, you know, envy their lives. Generally, to yehi hota hai ki we envy the lives of the rich and the famous and the powerful. We want to be like them. That is why we try very hard to improve our status. Ham dunya mein har kaam isi le karte. Ham padte isliye taake mein achhi naukri mile, achhi naukri milegi to achhe paise milenge, achhe paise milenge to achhi gadi khareed lenge, achhe ghar mein reh lenge, achhe kapre pehel lenge. Hamar status zada ho jayega, thik hai na? To ye jo status ki jo door hai na, that is according to words with artificial. That is why the these people they are in that kind of rat race that is why Wordsworth does not want to um, talk about them that is why he does not want to uh, imitate their lives in his poetry he chose rustic life for poetic treatment in that condition of life essential passion of the heart finds a better soil جو اصل ہے ایموشن آپ کے دل کا جو اصل آپ کا سول ہے جو آپ کی اصل ہے it is nourished in that soil you come to know yourself the, you, your original self انسان کی original self کیا ہے it's essentially good okay? you're born on the faith of God basically so when you're close to nature and all these outside effectors are not there to influence your thinking process and your spiritual being 
then you will be close to your original self. Uh, original self ki nourishment ke liye rustic life, your country life according to Wordsworth is the best life. By his own temperament, sorry, he showed much independence of mind as reflecting the traditional subjects derived by his predecessors from the fashionable source, uh, social life. He, uh, it's not that ke just because people before him who have been treated as masters, who are called classics, just because they focused on something, he does not think that he has to. He's independent enough, he's original enough as far as his thought is, uh, thought is counted. He does not want to do something that just because it has been done before. So he's been very original here, he's been very independent here, and he does not, uh, uh, you know, follow the traditional subjects um, it, which were derived by his predecessors, people who came before him. Uh, he does not focus on the fashionable social life. Yes, we have example of Alexander Pope ke liye sakte this ne, this rape of the lock likha tha. rape of the lock was about the society life okay about the views and the girls and how the girls they used to flirt with men and what goes on in the society how does the repetition they are destroyed all the uh, typical uh, idiosyncrasies of Victorian life at that time uh, sorry uh, life at that time English life at that time society life at that time to usne un social is, uh, issues ko bhi nahi chheda usne social life ko bhi discuss nahi kiya usne ye jo high political high social life hoti hai jo tea parties wali coffee parties wali or kitty parties wali or is tarah ki jo um, uh, galas hote hai inko bhi nahi chheda he did not talk about them he had the independence of mind to ignore all these things by his own temperament he was prone to be attracted by things of elemental simplicity and necessary colour to the choice of subjects from low ruler life. He decided to use the language of common people as the vehicle of poetic expression, rejecting the artificial diction of the 18th century. Now he did two things. temperamentally he was a simple person. He was temperamentally, of course, of course it has to be temperamental. And said, until you are like that, you can't force yourself to like nature. Okay? He liked nature by nature. He liked to be close to nature. So that is why one of the reasons he chose it. He has a reason as well. It's not just something that he was born with. It was not a choice that he was born with. He was born with it. He liked nature. But here his choice was intentional. He chose the simplicity because he liked it. He believed in it. And as a result of this choice, as a result, uh, as, a, as a necessary outcome of that choice, he chose the rustic life. And when he chose rustic life, ki, to phir automatically the life, the language thi, un logon ki, common insan, ki, jo aam pe conversation ke liye karte the, the li that language became the language of his poetry. Wo diction wo ho gayi, wo zaban ho gayi, theke? It was different from the poetic expression which was used during the 18th century. It was, it was very, very different from the uh, expressions that were used by the um, uh, Augustans, the new classes, because they believed in very good language, in very scholarly language. Aur wo bade dhoon dhoon ke references laate the, bade dhoon dhoon ke illusions laate the. They used a lot of literary devices. They believed in it. But um, Wordsworth, he didn't. So he completely, uh, you know, moved away from it. Wordsworth rejected the guardian and insane um, uh, phraseology of many modern writers. He insisted that his poems contain little poetic diction and are written in a selection of the real language of men in a state of vivid sensation. Okay, <sighs> rahe. Uh, guarded language use karne ki zorat he was against it guarded language but he soch samaj ke select karke words ko use kiya jaye but a soch samaj ke alfaz ka istemal ho ki is jagah pe ye lafz acha lagega is lafz se meri ilmi qabiliyat ki dhaak baith jayegi i have to use this word inane physiology too much uh, beautiful words, uh, words that uh, words that show that are ostentatious, words that show your power of oration. Uh, oration. It, 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 these kind of things he he completely uh, disregard. He insists that his poems contain little poetic diction. He does not believe in you know uh, making his poems all flowery and beautiful. He does not believe in that. He does not believe in using diction. He does not believe in you know language diction. का मतलब ये है कि वो language जो जिससे poetry की आपके सामने एक खूबसूरत शक्ल आए. He says कि उसका subject matter ही इतना important है और जो feelings वो explain कर रहा है, जो feelings वो portray कर रहा है, they are important enough. And because of these feelings, uh, people are going to enjoy reading the poem. वो कह रहा है कि selection of the real language of men in a state of vivid sensation 
پویچی کی لینگویج ایسی ہونی چاہیے جو کہ عام طور پر لوگ بولتے ہوں in the state of vivid sensation when their emotions are charged up when they have had this notable experience جو وہ notable experience کے نتیج میں جو powerful flow of spontaneous flow of powerful emotions ہے تو وہ جو powerful emotions سے لینگویج نکلے گی نا that is the language that should be the language of poetic creation words were defined the employment of meta in poetry as a protest against the use of poetic diction uh, whereas in the matter of poetic diction Wordsworth breaks with the orthodox convention of his days and return to the natural diction of normal man uh, he says that he has used his meters iambic pentameter he has used it just to show that jo ye diction use kar rahe hain language ke liye, poetry ke liye, he, he is against it or as a result of it he has used the meter which was the meter of the conversation of a common man in a matter of meter he appeals to the tradition the conquering testimony of the ages he says has established the laws of meter and all reasonable people submit to them and acknowledge them as super added charm he says that there has to be something who verse me likh raha hai to he has to follow some sort of rhyme and meter but he cannot say ke poetic diction jo hai wo completely different hoi chahiye he says ke meter is something that has been established over centuries it is something that people have been doing for so many so so long if it has survived so many centuries so many ages so many political and literary um, uh, what do you call the movements then it means that it has some sense in it so I, I'll stick to it I'll stick to meter but don't expect me to follow the poetic diction of the predecessors I do not believe in it I, I will use the meter I will use the uh, because it, it, it would add some sort of reasonable charm to it because verse create karne ke liye to aapko meter chahiye hi lekin wo meter jo hai wo ek guarded us mein hoga meter ke liye mein poetry nahi likhunga poetry ke andar mein meter zaroor add karunga taake uske andar wo charm aur wo pleasure aa sake jo ke poetry ka hissa hota hai words would say that in his poems he has dealt with great and universal passion of men the most general and interesting of the occupations as the entire world of nature before him words would say ki usne apne poems ka uska subject matter kya hai wo kehta hai ki i'm going to you i'm going to deal with the great and the universal passion of men and what is the greatest and the universal passion of men the most general and the interesting of their occupation something that is general and something that is most interesting as the entire world of nature before him the world of nature before him is the best thing that can happen to man it's something that they would turn to automatic it would something that would employ their interest it would be something that would engage themselves uh, it would it would be something that that um, uh, men is willing to deal with all the time it's universal every man is interested in nature it's the greatest of the passion men have he could have written in prose as well but he decided to write in meter for the sake of charm kehte ki nature mujhe itna inspire karti hai ki i can write in prose it, it, it would be good enough because nature is such a strong force that it does not require verse uh, for it, for for me to depict its charm but i'm writing in poetry for the sake of charm kyunki usme thoda zyada charm add karegi wo thoda mujhe pleasure zyada deti hai i like poetry i like the rhyme and the meter and because of that reason i'm going to write in poetry because poetry is always more attractive than prose pleasure is clear from the facts or uh, the poem written on humble subjects and in more naked and simple language have continued to give pleasure from generation to generation and this is quite true when we say that uh, wordsworth has been uh, dealing with very simple subjects and he's been using very simple uh, language but he's right when he says that ke main us passion se deal kar raha hu jo insaan ki greatest passion hai jo insaan ke liye universal passion hai jo uski sabse badi um, interesting occupation hai uske liye theek hai the first and the most interesting occupation and it is because of this these reasons that it is the most general most universal most most passionate passion of human beings that is why ki jo usne itne simple subjects pe likhi hai poems aur itne aasan language mein likhi hai the naked language mein likhi hai usko kisi tarah bhi usne phool patte nahi pehnaye to uske bawajood bhi agar uski poems ko people have been enjoying them from generation to generation purani baat hogi 1800s ki baat hai wordsworth and we still enjoy him
we still enjoy reading about the solitary reaper and we still enjoy reading about the daffodils so it means that he was right when he say that poet that nature is the most uh, powerful force it's the most powerful passion there there is for human beings while defining the meter the end of poetry is to produce excitement to coexistence with an overbalance of pleasure at the end of poetry kya hai pleasure hai end of poetry hai is to provide pleasure to man whoever reads it so meter kya hoga meter kya karega ke wo meter us excitement ko restrain karega us pleasure ko restrain karega it's going to add to it as well but it's going to restrain it as well it's going to be the uh, constraining force it's going to be the compartment the excitement is an unusual state of mind in the state of excitement ideas and feelings do not follow each other in the usual regular order the expression of ideas and feelings appear to be incoherent jab aap state of excitement mein hote hain to aapke ideas aur aapki jo feelings hoti hain they do not follow each other aap inke um, feel kar rahe hote hain aur uski wajah se aapke ideas bhi aa rahe hote hain aap dono ke andar apni feelings aur ideas ke andar you can't differentiate in order to differentiate between your feelings and ideas you need to keep these two things separate you need to have a balance between those two things they do not follow each other in a uh, usual order yani ki pehle ek idea aayega aur us idea se feelings generate honge ye pehle feelings honge to feelings pe base pe aap koi idea generate karenge no it doesn't happen like that when you're in the state of excitement the things are jumbled up one on top of another and you cannot distinguish between these two ki this is the black and this is the white they become gray फ्यूज हो जाती हैं आप इसमें द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ आइडियाज एंड फीलिंग्स दे अपेयर टू बी इनकोहेरेंट जब ये होता है कि वो फीलिंग्स और आइडियाज मिक्सड अप होते हैं तो उनका जो एक्सप्रेशन है चाहे वो पोइट्री के फॉर्म में हो चाहे वो प्रोज के फॉर्म में हो वो इनकोहेरेंट होता है इट डज नॉट मेक सेंस अगेन इफ द वर्ड्स बाय विच दिस एक्साइटमेंट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड अ पावरफुल देन देर इज सम डेंजर दैट एक्साइटमेंट मे बी कैरेड बियॉन्ड इट्स प्रॉपर बाउंड अगर तो बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग वर्ड्स यूज किए जाएंगे एंड इफ द वर्ड्स आर पावरफुल इनफ देन द एक्साइटमेंट वुड बी कैरेट बियॉन्ड इट्स प्रॉपर बाउंड इट वुड बी टू मच एक्साइटमेंट ठीक है आपने ऐसे लैंग्वेज इस्तेमाल कर ली जिससे इमोशंस इंस्टिगेट हो गए जिससे इमोशंस हाइपर हो गए तो एक्साइटमेंट की स्टेट ज्यादा हो जाएगी दे फॉर इन ऑर्डर टू रिस्ट्रेन and temper the ideas and feelings in the state of excitement meter is essential it restrains the unusual state of mind to so, meter ka purpose basically aap explain kar rahe hai ki wo state of excitement ko control karega state of excitement ko contain karega bajaye iske ki it let it go out it would um, make it stay in the reasonable boundaries state of excitement is a good thing but it has to be in the reasonable boundary the four stages of process of um poetry creation number 1 we knew it observation that is notable experience second is the recollection in the state of tranquility third is the contemplation that you observe it whether you have recollected the same thing it is it creating the same sort of emotions in you and then imaginative excitement then you get all excited about it the shaping of the poem and the pleasure you're supposed to get from the shaping of the poem and the pleasure you're supposed to provide to the reader the poet observes certain character situation फिनमिना ऑफ नेचर ठीक है कुछ भी ऑब्जर्व करता है कुछ भी ऑब्जर्व कर सकता है जैसे कि मैं आपको बता चुकी हूँ कि आप कुछ भी चीज़ ऑब्जर्व कर सकते हैं कोई फूल ऑब्जर्व कर लिया रेनबो ऑब्जर्व कर ली खूबसूरत पहाड़ ऑब्जर्व कर लिया बर्फ ऑब्जर्व कर ली कोई भी चीज़ हो सकती है ठीक है यू ऑब्जर्व दैट यू कैन ऑब्जर्व अ पर्सन यू कैन ऑब्जर्व अ सिचुएशन यू कैन ऑब्जर्व अ फिनमिना फिनमिना कैन बी रेनबो बारिश वगैरह वगैरह कुछ भी इवन बिजली जो बिजली का रखती है सम पीपल लाइक दैट एज वेल सो यू ऑब्जर्व दैट द पोइट ऑब्जर्व दैट this observation excites in his uh, in him certain emotions theek hai kuch khaas kisam ke emotions aapke andar paida hote hain ab un emotions ko he does not give poetic expression to their immediately but carry them in heart for some time theek hai you observed a beautiful um this thunder and lightning theek hai aur aapne usko dekh liya and you stored it in your heart for some time aapne uske bare mein foran nahi share kehna shuru kar diya ye nahi hota ki aapne achhi si badal garajte hue dekhe achhi bijli kadakti dekhi to aapne foran share kehna shuru kar diya aapne khoobsurat phool dekha to aapne foran share kehna shuru kar diya balki wo image jo hai us image ko aap apne andar store kar lete hain kuch arse ke liye after the years he recollects these emotions years is a little too much to ask but that's what words would say in his preface ki kuch saalon ke baad he recollects these emotions in tranquility 
कुछ सालों के बाद the poet is going to sit back and relax. He is going to be in a calm state of mind, in a calm state, emotional state, and he is going to recollect those images, things that he has seen in his life, contemplates upon them. ठीक है, उनके बारे में सोचता है कि what kind of images were they, what kind of feelings did they give rise to, what what kind of effect did they have on the poet, and revive his original emotional excitement. ना सिर्फ उनके बारे में सोचता है, बल्कि वो इमोशंस को रिकॉल करने की कोशिश करता है, जो पहली दफा उसने फील किया थे, उन चीजों को देखने पे, ठीक है? तो पहला प्रोसेस ऑब्जर्वेशन का है, जब उसने किसी भी कैरेक्टर को, किसी भी सिचुएशन को, किसी भी फिनोमेना को देखा था, उसके बाद उसने उस उसके अंदर जो सर्टेन इमोशंस पैदा हुए थे, उसको फॉरेन फॉरेन एक्सप्रेशन नहीं दे दिया, उसको फॉरेन फॉरेन पोइट्री के फॉर्म में कन्वर्ट नहीं कर दिया, बल्कि ही स्टार्टेड ही स्टार्टेड टू कीप कीप ऑन स्टोरिंग दिस इमेजेस। द नेक्स्ट स्टेप कम्स दैट आफ्टर इयर्स ऑफ बीइंग ऑफ ऑब्जर्वि� to think of the original excitement that he felt when he, for the first time, he observed his images. The emotions thus survived are purged of all that was accidental, temporary, and superfluous. This means that when he saw the first thing he saw, so if he had some sort of feelings, those feelings could be the result of so many other factors as well. He was in a good mood or a bad mood. He was with the people who like whom he liked or he disliked. Um, he was, uh, you know, uh, in a different stage of uh, life, which was good or bad. So these are factors. Uski us vakat ki pehli dafa ke emotions ko effect kar rahe hain. Jab second time when he's contemplating, when he's recollecting those images and he's contemplating and he's trying to revive the emotions that he felt. This time, the emotions that would come back to him, the feelings that would come back to him, would be uh, would be the purest feelings that would be attached to that experience. They would not be the feelings that would be attached to um, some other thing happening in his life at that time. It would be purged. It would be clear. It would be it would be free of all other elements, all other factors. It would not be something accidental. It would not be something temporary. It would not be something superfluous. क्योंकि देखिए जबकि बहुत अच्छी चीज़ देखी बहुत खूबसूरत चीज़ देखी तो एक दफ़ा तुझे एक्साइटमेंट की स्टेट है उसमें बहुत ज़्यादा सुपरफ्लोस इमोशंस भी हो सकते हैं एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डनरी फीलिंग भी आ सकती है ठीक है कुछ अरसे बाद जब आप दोबारा वही चीज़ देखते हो तो आप कहते हैं कि हाँ ठीक है अच्छी है अब आई लाइक इट बट इट्स नॉट दैट काइंड ऑफ फीलिंग आई हैड एट दैट टाइम सो उस वक्त रिकलेक्शन के टाइम पर फीलिंग है दैट इज़ द ट्रू फीलिंग दैट यू हैव फॉर दैट दैट थिंग दैट यू ऑब्जर्व द फिनोमिना दैट यू ऑब्जर्व द सिचुएशन दैट यू ऑब्जर्व और द पर्सन दैट यू ऑब्जर्व Finally, this emotional excitement is given poetic expression. फिर उसके बाद फिर जब आपने recollect किया और आपने emotions को assess किया और आपको पता चला कि these are the final emotions I have for this thing, then and only then you give it the poetic expression. This is the process of poetic creation which gives joy both to the poet and the reader. अब इस प्रोसेस में भी प्लेजर इन्वॉल्व है और ये प्रोसेस जब खत्म हो जाएगा और ये रीडर तक पहुंचेगा तो इसमें भी प्लेजर इन्वॉल्व है। You have pleasure, you feel pleasure while you're doing it, and you'll feel pleasure when you're reading about it, and you'll have pleasure because you have given pleasure to someone else. Threefold pleasure, I told you. The nature of the poetic truth. What was it? What, what is poetry? Uh, uh, wh why is it called the superior of all the sciences and the essence of all knowledge? There has to be a reason for this. Aristotle has rightly said that poetry is most philosophical of writings. Now, you can see all poets, starting from Aristotle and Plato, or words, that poetry is the highest form of all knowledge, essence and knowledge, the highest art form. Hai. It's greater than the sciences because the sciences can be incorporated in poetry as well. Uh, poetic truth is higher than the truth of history or philosophy. Aristotle ne bhi hai ka words with bhi hai kehte hai. Ki jo poetry mein truth hai, jo poetic truth hai, it's higher than uh, that of history or philosophy. History or philosophy mein bohat si cheezo usko influence kari hoti hai. Poetry comes from the heart. It comes from within. It is controlled by mind a little and it's controlled by your senses as well. So it's something that's the purest human being has to offer. Its object is truth not individual and local, but general and operative. Something that is universal, something that is true for everyone. It's something that comes from a human being who's above all these uh, limitations of race, creed, nationalism. He's going to speak to 
as a human being to the rest of the humanity. So the poetic truth is better than the rest of the truths, of the historical truth or the political truth or the philosophical truth. History deals with the particular and philosophy with the universal. But poetry deals with both particular and the universal. Okay? एक बंदे की बात भी करेगी लेकिन उस एक बंदे की बात करते हुए पूरी यूनिवर्स की बात भी करेगी उसका सब्जेक्ट मैटर सिर्फ एक इंसान नहीं होगा अगर वो एक इंसान की बात करेगी पोइट्री तो वो डील बेसिकली सारे इंसानों के फीलिंग से कर रही होगी हिस्ट्री एक पर्टिकुलर इंसिडेंट को डील करेगी हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंग्लैंड टूडर एज की बात अगर आप करेंगे तो सिर्फ टूडर एरा के साथ डील कर रही होगी उसके लोगों के साथ डील कर रही होगी यूनिवर्स फिलोसफी जनरली ह्यूमन बींग्स की इंक्लिनेशन के बारे में उनकी मेंटल स्टेट के बारे में उनके साइकोलॉजिकल एलिमेंट्स के बारे में डिस्कस करेंगे कि जी इस तरह दिस इज दिस इज ट्रूथ एंड दिस इज लाइफ एंड दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लाइफ दिस इज सोल सोल इज मोटल इम मोटल एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा इस तरह के क्वेश्चन को आंसर करेगी एग्जिस्टेंशलिज्म को आंसर करेगी जनरल होगी यूनिवर्सल होगी पोइट्री हैज क्वालिटी दैट इट इज बोथ पर्टिकुलर एंड यूनिवर्सल दैट इज वाई इट इज सुपीरियर दैन द रेस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट इज वाई इट इज सुपीरियर दैन हिस्ट्री दैट इज वाई इट इज सुपीरियर दैन फिलोसफी बिकॉज इट हैज बोथ द थिंग्स इट इज पर्टिकुलर एज वेल एज यूनिवर्सल पोइट्री एम्स एट द यूनिवर्सल ट्रूथ एंड ऑल्सो एट दैम थ्रू पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल्स पोइट्री आपको यूनिवर्सल ट्रूथ बताती है वो आपको बताती है कि सच क्या है वट इज द पर्पज ऑफ योर एग्जिस्टेंस एंड हाउ इज इट गोइंग टू टेल यू बाई गिविंग यू पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल्स बट टीचिंग थ्रू एग्जाम्पल एक पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल दे के एक यूनिवर्सल ट्रूथ बताती है सो दिस इज वाई पोइट्री इज सुपीरियर दैन अदर थिंग्स अदर साइंस अच्छा पोइट्री एंड इमेज ऑफ मैन एंड नेचर वर्ल्ड वर्थ हैज स्टेटेड दैट पोइट्री इज द इमेज ऑफ मैन एंड नेचर पोइट्री में इंसान और नेचर उनकी आप इसकी रिलेशनशिप हाउ नेचर इन्फ्लुएंस इज मैन एंड हाउ मैन इन्फ्लुएंस इज नेचर इट्स जस्ट द जस्ट एन इमेज ऑफ दैट ही इज नॉट सेंग दैट इट्स एन इमिटेशन ही इज नॉट सेंग दैट दैट्स वट एर टोटल सेट इट एम्स इट्स ट्रूथ टू नेचर एट द फेथफुल रिपोडक्शन ऑफ रियालिटी इट्स गोइंग टू प्रजेंट द ट्रूथ बट इट्स ऑल्सो गोइंग टू इट्स गोइंग टू रीप्रोड्यूस द रियालिटी इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू बी एन इमिटेशन रिमेंबर इमिटेशन इज समथिंग एल्स इट्स गोइंग टू रीप्रोड्यूस रियालिटी दे मेनी ऑब्स्टिकल्स इन द वे ऑफ हिस्टोरियन एंड द फिलोसफर वेर एज द पोइट हैज टू इनकाउंटर ओनली वन ऑब्स्टिकल एंड दैट इज द नेसेसिटी ऑफ गिविंग इमीडिएट प्लेजर टू ह्यूमन बींग उसका पर्पज सिर्फ ये है कि उसने फॉरन एक प्लेजर देना है इंसान को उसने बाकी चीज़ों के अबाव ही डज नॉट हैव टू राइज अबाव ऑल द अदर लिमिटेशन एंड रिस्ट्रिक्शन एंड ही डज नॉट हैव टू थिंक अबाउट हिज नेशन एंड ही डज नॉट हैव टू थिंक अबाउट यू नो दर्टिकुलर पर्टिकुलर इंसिडेंट एंड हाउ इज इट गोइंग टू अफेक्ट द जनरेशन टू कम ही जस्ट एम्स एट प्रोवाइडिंग प्लेजर द हिस्टोरियन टास्क इज डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज ही हैज टू कलेक्ट फैक्ट्स फ्राम हिस्ट्री बिफोर इंटरप्रिटिंग दैम करेक्टली वो आपको फैक्ट्स देगा और उसको चाहे सारी सारी हिस्ट्री के पूरे पीछे तक जाके फैक्ट्स इकट्ठे करने पड़ेंगे हिस्टोरियन को फिर वो उनको इंटरप्रेट कर सकता है जबकि पोइट के लिए ये करना जरूरी नहीं है वर्थ वर्थ स्टेटेड दैट द एंड ऑफ पोइट्री इज टू इम्पैक्ट इमीडिएट प्लेजर दिस शुड नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड एज द डिग्रेडेशन ऑफ द पोइट्स आर्ट क्या है कुछ भी नहीं करना सिर्फ प्लेजर देना है दैट्स सो सिंपल दैट्स लाइक यू नो व्हाट यू कॉल अमरासी मरासी का क्या काम है आपको एंटरटेन करना तो पोइट का काम भी क्या आपको एंटरटेन करना है दिस इज लाइक रीग्रेडेशन दिस इज लाइक यू नो मेकिंग देम फील लो कि बस इतना छोटा सा तो काम है इसलिए तो हमें हंसाना है इसलिए तो हमें रुलाना है इसलिए तो हमें खुश करना है या इसलिए तो हमें उदास करना है सो दैट्स नॉट अ बिग जॉब दिस शुड नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड एज द डीग्रेडेशन ऑफ द पोइट आर्ट it should be rather considered as an acknowledgement of the beauty of the universe and as a homage paid to the dignity of the man man is so important and the universe is so beautiful that it is important for the universal truths to be delivered to man to make them pleasurable to man man is great man is the it, it's dignified it has an existence and its existence has to be acknowledged its existence in the universe has to be acknowledged it the beauty of the universe has to be acknowledged and all this is done by the poet uska kaam sirf pleasure provide karna nahi hai lekin uska pleasure jo hai wo itni sari cheezon ko apne saath leke aata hai it should be considered as an act of poet who look at the world in the spirit of love he looked at the world with the spirit of love he does not hate anything he is not supposed to judge he is not supposed to pass um you know uh, uh, harsh comments he is not there to interpret 
uh, how things have worked out in the world before. He's just going to uh, look at things with love. He's just going to present the bright side to him. Pleasure is the ground elementary principle, which makes man feel, live, move, and gain knowledge. If you are not getting pleasure, you, you are not doing anything. You can't do anything. Why do you live? Because you want to gratify yourself. Why do you eat? Because you want to, you know, you, you, you get pleasure out of it, don't you? Why do you live? Why do you eat? Why do you work? Why do you need money? Just to provide pleasure to you. So pleasure is not something that is degrading and degenerated. Of course, it's something important. It's the essence of your being. We carry sympathy in our heart because through sympathy we get pleasure. We, we like this. Sometimes self-pity itself is providing us pleasure. We want to sympathize with someone, why? We want to do something nice to someone, why? Because it gives us pleasure. Charity, because it gives them some sort of pleasure. They feel good about themselves. When we sympathize with those who are in pain and suffering, we get inner pleasure. Why do you give it? It's your name, but you get a happy from it. You feel satisfied, you feel good with yourself, you feel good about yourself. You've done something nice. So there is some sort of calm that descends upon you. We endeavor to acquire knowledge because knowledge gives pleasure. It does. Once you get used to it, once you get hooked up to it, just like Dr. Foss did, Marloka, who played Christopher Marloka, when uh, Dr. Faust, he, he was so much in love with uh, knowledge and it gave, it gave him so much pleasure that he was ready to sell his soul to get all the knowledge necessary, all the knowledge in the world. Okay? So why do you get knowledge? Why do you learn things? Because it gives you pleasure. You feel good. Why do you read books? Because it makes you feel good. Pleasure is not something to look down upon. Pleasure is not something base. Pleasure is not something uncouth. It's something, it's the, it's the core of your existence. You're created this way. You're born this way. Allah na aapko banaya hi is liye hai. Aapki, aapke, aapka ye asal hai. Aapki jibillat hai. It's your instinct. You need pleasure. You, you enjoy this pleasure. So why feel or why degrade a poet just because the end of poetry is to provide pleasure? Wordsworth says they do not look, about, look down upon a poet just because the end of poetry, according to Wordsworth, is to provide pleasure. Pleasure is the basics of a human being. The poet studies man in his, his, in his ordinary life. Um, he studies elemental nature, instincts and impulses of man. This is no small subject. You're supposed to study an entire human being. And human beings have so many various shades. They have so many uh, different sides. They have so many different angles to look at. A insan itni sari feelings or emotions ka capable hai ki hum imagine nahi kar sakte. Unke itne multiples bante hain, unke itni jaise hota hai na shatranj ki chale lakhon mein jaati hain. इस तरह के इंसान की पर्सनालिटी के शेड्स भी लाखों में जाते हैं उसके रिएक्शंस उसके एक्शंस उसकी उसकी उसका बोलना चालना बॉडी उसके फेशियल एक्सप्रेशंस उसके द वे ही वुड रिएक्ट टू सर्टेन सिचुएशन दे दे देर इन मिलियंस मोर देन मिलियंस परहेप्स इनफिनिट यू डोंट नो व्हाट अ ह्यूमन बीइंग इज कैपेबल ऑफ हाउ इज गोइंग टू थिंक व्हाट कैन नेचर व्हाट कैन ह्यूमन नेचर प्रेजेंट ये जो सीरियल किलर्स होते हैं आप इनकी नेचर को इनकी साइकोलॉजी को ऑब्जर्व करते हैं तो आप हैरान हो जाते हैं कि इज अ ह्यूमन माइंड केपेबल ऑफ डूइंग दैट जो नए नए तरीके निकलते हैं फ्रॉड के और कंप्यूटर्स ये हैक करने के ये जो ये जो साइबर वॉर्स होती हैं ये जो जितनी मूवीज बनती हैं इतनी हाई टेक किस्म की इन सारी चीजों को देखते हैं कि आप हैरान होते हैं कि ह्यूमन माइंड हैज दिस मच कैपेबिलिटी द नेचर ऑफ मैन हैज दिस मच कैपेबिलिटी इट इट हैज टू मच पोटेंशियल सो स्टडिंग द इंस्टिंग्स एंड स्टडिंग द इम्पल्स ऑफ मैन एंड स्टडिंग द नेचर ऑफ मैन Uh, it's no small feat. So if a poet studies it, you can't degrade him. You can't, he has an exalted status. He has, he's doing something so great. He's doing something so monumental. He's studying human being and studying human being, the nature and the impulses and the instincts and the emotions and the feelings is no small thing. He studies man and the external objects that surround as acting and reacting upon each other and which produces our inflict complexity of pain and pleasure. इंसान जिस दुनिया में एग्जिस्ट कर रहा है उसके आगे पीछे जितनी चीज़ें हैं वो चीज़ें एक दूसरे के साथ कैसे रिएक्ट कर रही हैं वो चीज़ें इंसान के साथ कैसे रिएक्ट कर रही हैं हाउ द ह्यूमन बीइंग इज रिएक्टिंग टू दोज थिंग्स व्हाट काइंड ऑफ दिस वेब दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स वेब ऑफ पेन एंड प्लेजर इज क्रिएटेड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस एक्शन एंड रिएक्शन एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस इंटरेक्शन बिटवीन द वर्ल्ड एंड द ह्यूमन बींग द पोइट स्टडीज दैट 
it studies what the world is made up of and how the human being interacts with this world and the universe around him. It, it is an intricate web. It's not something simple. It's not just a matter of giving pleasure. For giving that pleasure, he has to make this much study. He has to understand this much data. He studies man with the complex ideas and sensations and convictions, institutions and deductions. Insan itna simple nahi hai. Uske complexes hai. Uske, uske andar ek dunya abad hai. Uske apni inhibitions hai. Uske apni uh, deductions hai. Uske apni uh, logon ke baare mein opinions hai. Uske apni idiosyncrasies hai. Insan is a very, very complex being. Uske emotions, uske nature, uske intellect, uske logic, uske reason, uske physical aspect. You start studying it, it has so much to offer. So if a poet is studying so much in a human being, he's not only studying a human being physically, he's studying his nature, he's studying his emotions, he's studying his feelings, he's studying instincts, he's studying his impulses, he's studying his nature, he's studying his complexities, he's studying the reaction he has on other beings, the, other be the reaction the o uh, objects have on him, um, the interaction between human being and nature, the interaction of human being and the universe, and the web of pain and pleasure. So much stuff. It's not something small, it's not something trivial, just providing pleasure. No, don't look down upon the poet. It's not just providing pleasure. It has a lot to do. It has a lot to study for. Through his sympathy with objects of nature, that is, gains the knowledge which ultimately result in an overbalance of enjoyment. He studies nature, he studies all these things, and as a result of it, he provides enjoyment. He, this understanding of nature provides enjoyment to the man. This, there's a part in preface to the lyrical palette where he discusses uh, the poetry and science, the relationship between poetry and science, whether science is superior or the poetry is superior. We know his answer, we know he believes that poetry is to be superior than the rest of the sciences or philosophies or histories, whatever. Wordsworth states that the poet prompted by the feelings of pleasure converses with the affections and with general nature. Now, what's the issue that he has to pleasure? So, if pleasure uh, provide pleasure, he's going to converse with the nature and he's going to uh, converse with the affections. He's going to be all nicey-nicey. The scientists who work hard in the search for truth also finds pleasure in truth. Okay? You'll find pleasure in nature when you want to pr provide pleasure to someone. When you're in search of pleasure, in search of providing pleasure, you, you'll have pleasure. Okay? A poet is looking nature in pleasure. Scientist, he would have some kind of pleasure as well. When he's in search of truth, he would have pleasure. He would enjoy finding the truth. Okay? Oh, um, this person just made a pencil in Benaiti, Sir Alexander Fleming. He says that we scientists, we, we dance a dance in the labs. Okay? और हम वो डांस करते जैसे दरवेश नहीं है रूमी के जैसे वो घूमते हैं उस तरह घूमते रहते हैं लैब्स में और बस अपना प्याला ऊपर किए रखते हैं और अल्लाह किसी के भी प्याले में हल डाल देते हैं तो वो जो ट्रूथ उनके प्याले में आता है तो दे दे हैव दिस प्लेजर दे वांटेड टू डू समथिंग दे वांटेड टू गेट समथिंग दे वांटेड टू गेन दिस एवर्ट ऑफ नॉलेज दे डू गेट इट द नॉलेज ऑफ बोथ द पोएट एंड द मैन ऑफ साइंस इज प्लेजर जो पोइट असेस करेगा असटेन करेगा नेचर में से नॉलेज इंसान को समझ के जो नॉलेज गेन करेगा उसके लिए वो प्लेजर है और साइंटिस्ट के लिए वो जो ट्रूथ उसने डिस्कवर किया है जो उसने ट्रूथ अल्लाह ताला से मांगा है अकॉर्डिंग टू अलेक्जेंडर फ्लैमिंग वो जब उसके पास आता है तो उसके लिए वो प्लेजर है बट द नॉलेज ऑफ द ट्रूथ दैट साइंटिस्ट रियलाइज इज पर्टिकुलर एंड पर्सनल वो एक खास प्रॉब्लम के साथ डील कर रहे हैं वो उस प्रॉब्लम उसको जो उसकी उसका साइंटिफिक क्वेश्चन है वो उसका आंसर ढूंढने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं ठीक है दैट पार्ट ऑफ ट्रूथ वुड बी पर्टिकुलर टू दैट पर्टिकुलर साइंटिस्ट टू दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम द ट्रूथ कम्स टू हिम स्लोली एंड कैन नॉट बी शेयर बाय मैन गाइड इन जनरल आहिस्ता से प्रोसेस होते हैं ना साइंटिफिक डिस्कवरी का प्रोसेस तो बहुत स्लो है एंड यू कैन नॉट बी शेयर विद द जनरल फैम लाइक यू कैन नॉट यू नो सेलिब्रेटेड क्योंकि उसका रिजल्ट आ जाता है और जब वो चीज़ प्रोड्यूस हो जाती है तो ऑफकोर्स द जनरल पब्लिक उसको रियलाइज करती है एंड देर हैप्पी अबाउट इट बट जो प्लेजर है वो उस साइंटिस्ट का हिस्सा ही होता है वो प्लेजर उसी को फील होता है सिर्फ पोइट के केस में ये नहीं होता द प्लेजर विच दिस ट्रूथ प्रोवाइड्स इज लिमिटेड टू द इंडिविजुअल साइंटिस्ट ओनली ही चेरिशेज एंड लवज इट इन सॉलीट्यूड 
جو اس نے ڈسکاوری کی نا جو اس کو پلیجر اس سے حاصل ہو وہ سائنٹسٹ کو ہی حاصل ہو رہا ہے اس ڈسکاوری کا جو پلیجر ہے وہ ہم فیل نہیں کر سکتے ہیں جو اس نے اس کے اندر اس کی انپوٹ ہے جو اس کی محنت ہے جو اس نے سٹرگل کی ہے جو پلیجر اس سٹرگل سے بھی اچیف کر رہا ہے اسرٹین کر رہا ہے سیکھ کر رہا ہے وہ اسی سائنٹسٹ کا ہے ٹھیک ہے جو پویٹ آن در در ہینڈ سنگز اے سانگ ان وچ آل ہیومن بینگز جوائن ہیم ہیس پولٹک چوت از یونیورسل اٹس ناٹ پرٹیکلر جو وہ بات کرے گا جس سچ کی بات وہ کرے گا جس نالج کو وہ گین کر رہا ہے اٹس کامن ٹو آل ہیومن بینگز اٹس یونیورسل ایوری ون وڈ لو دیٹ ایوری ون وڈ انجوائے دس فیلڈ آف ڈیفیڈ ایوری وڈ وڈ ون وڈ انجوائے دس وومن ریپنگ دا فیلڈ اینڈ سنگنگ اے سانگ اینڈ دیر از اے کلاؤڈ لیس اسکائی بلو بیوٹیفل ایفیکٹ آف دا پوئٹک ٹروتھ وائی ڈو وی نیڈ دا پوئٹک ٹروتھ وٹ وڈ یو اچیو بائی ہیونگ دس پوئٹک ٹروتھ ورس وڈ بلیو دیٹ دا پوئٹک ٹروتھ ہی ڈز ناٹ وش ٹو سیپریٹ پوئٹری اینڈ سائنس انٹائرلی ہی سے اس کے پوئٹری سائنس الگ الگ نہیں کر سکتے پوئٹری ٹروت کا حصہ ہے سائنس بھی یہ پوزس پوئٹری ٹو وٹ ہی ریگارڈ ایز اے سائنٹیفک موڈ آف ایپریہینشن سائنٹیفک نالج ہی تھاٹ واز ریموٹ فرام ہیومن انٹرسٹ اینڈ فیلنگس آپ کو سائنس کا فائدہ ضرور ہے سائنس آپ کو ایڈ کر رہی ہے آپ کی زندگی آسان بنا رہی ہے بٹ سائنٹیفک ٹروتھ جو ہیں وہ آپ کی فیلنگ سے ذرا دور کی بات ہے سائنس از آل میکینیکل سائنس از آل فیکچول اٹس ڈفرینٹ فرام یور فیلنگ اٹس اوے فرام یور ایموشنز بائی کنٹراس دا امپیکٹ آف پوئٹک ٹروتھ واز امیڈیٹ ناٹ اسٹینڈنگ اپان ایکسٹرنل ٹیسٹمنی بٹ کیریڈ اے لائف ان ٹو دا ہارٹ بائی پیشن اینڈ کنویٹ ان این ایٹماسفیئر آف سینسیشن سائنٹیفک ٹروتھ ریموٹ ہے ڈیٹیچڈ ہے الگ ہے یو یو کانٹ فیل دیٹ یو یو ڈونٹ ہیو دس سورٹ آف پلیجر دیٹ یو ووڈ ہیو ان دا پوئٹک ٹروتھ پوئٹک ٹروتھ از بورن ود ان یو اٹس بورن ان یور ہارٹ اٹس بورن ان دا ایٹماسفیئر آف سینسز یو فیل اٹ یو نیڈ اٹ اینڈ یو ہیو پلیجر ان اٹ ورڈس ورتھ سیز ہی پریز سائنس دیٹ ریز دا مائنڈ ٹو دا کانٹمپلیشن آف گاڈ ٹھیک ہے سائنس نے آپ سائنس کے ذریعے اپنے خدا کو پہچانا ہے آپ نے یو ہیو سرچ دا اسکائز اینڈ دا یونیورس بٹ ہی ڈسپائزڈ آل سائنس وچ واز اے بیئر کلیکشن آف فیکٹس فار دا اون سیک سائنس فار دا سیک آف سائنس جسٹ ٹو یو نو ڈسائفر تھنگس ڈی کوڈ تھنگس ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دا ورکنگس آف دا یونیورس جسٹ فار دا سیک آف اٹ نو ہی بلیوز ان اے سائنس دیٹ آنسر دا کوشچن دیٹ لیوز ٹو دا یونیورسل ٹروتھ بٹ اف دا سائنس از دیئر فار پرٹیکولرز اف دا سائنس از دیئر جسٹ ٹو ٹیل یو دیٹ ٹو پلس ٹو از ایکول ٹو فور بٹ وٹ وڈ یو گین آؤٹ آف اٹ وٹ کائنڈ آف یونیورسل ٹروتھ یو گین آؤٹ آف اٹ اف اٹ ڈز ناٹ ٹیل یو دیٹ اف اٹ جسٹ ٹیل یو دا کیمیکل فارمولا آف تھنگس اف جسٹ ٹیلز یو ہاؤ ٹو بیلنس اکویژنس دین ہی ڈز ناٹ بلیو ان سائنس ہی ڈز ناٹ لائک دیٹ کائنڈ آف سائنس ان ورڈس ود ججمنٹ سچ سائنس ویجڈ واز ود and wished to extinguish imagination in the mind of man. اس طرح کی سائنس آپ کو مکینیکل بنا دیں گے اس طرح کی سائنس آپ کی برین ڈیتھ کاز کرے گی یو گوئنگ ٹو بی اے سلیو آف انٹلیکٹ اونلی اینڈ اٹ ووڈ ہیو نو روم فار امیجنیشن ہیز چیف ایم واز دیئر فار ٹو پرزرو دا انڈیپینڈنس آف امیجنیٹو پاور ٹو کیپ اٹ فری فرام دا ٹائرنی آف نیکڈ فیکٹ فیکٹ از امپورٹنٹ یو نیڈ فیکٹ ان لائف بٹ اکارڈنگ ٹو ورڈس ورتھ ہی ہیز ٹو سیو ہیومن بینگس فرام دا نیکڈ فیکٹ ہی ہیز ٹو میک پیپل بلیو ان امیجنیشن ہی ہیز ٹو میک پیپل انویسٹیگیٹ امیجنیشن ہی وانٹس پیپل ٹو بی انڈیپینڈنٹ وین دے وانٹ ٹو ایکسپلور دے فیلنگس اینڈ دا ایموشنز اینڈ دا امیجنیشن ہی ڈز ناٹ وانٹ دیم ٹو بی اے سلیو ٹو دا نیکڈ فیکٹ دے ڈونٹ ہی ڈز ناٹ وانٹ دیم ٹو بی دا سائنٹیفک سلیو ہی وانٹ دیم ٹو تھنک and feel and emotion and be emotional and be imaginative the, he believed in the flight of fancy he is against all signs that would force him not to do so he believes that poetry is superior than all the sciences he believed that knowledge provided by science is superficial and intellectual he believes intellectual is superficial it does not provide you the depth that would be needed to lead this life it would just tell you the facts it would just tell you ki ye water hai ye hydrogen aur oxygen se mila ke bana hua hai isme hydrogen ke do molecules hain oxygen ka ek molecule hai aur iski hamare charon taraf maujood hai um, hydrogen bhi aur oxygen bhi aur pani zameen ke itne hisse pe hai facts it's not intellect intellect is something else intellect is the maturity to lead life to analyze life to think differently than the norms facts to sabko pata hai intellect is something else The scientists study only the appearance of things. 
he murders to dissect he would kill someone just to understand it he would not be he would not cherish life he would be the one to um, and he would try to understand things theek hai uske liye cheat phar karne ko bhi taiyar ho jayega he would murder something just to uh, rip it open and understand the function of the body so he thinks that science is very cruel this way it's very harsh this way the poet on the other hand studies the inner reality of the man the soul of the man theek hai poetry jo hai wo depth mein hai kyunki poet to according to most what is a person who thinks long and deep it's a person who has depth is a pensive person theek hai to wo kehta hai scientist jo hai wo to cheezon ko surface pe le raha hai wo cheezon ko superficially deal kar raha hai wo cheezon ke rules aur facts pe sirf focus kar raha hai jab pe poet jo hai is going to focus he is going to focus on the depth he is going to try and study the soul of man ye jo baat abhi humne thodi de pehle ki hai ki poetry ka पर्पज प्लेजर देना है बट गिविंग प्लेजर इज नॉट दैट ईजी फर्स्ट सेक ऑफ गिविंग प्लेजर यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड मैन एंड मैन हैज सो मैनी शेड्स द इनर रियालिटी ऑफ मैन दैट ही डिस्कवर्स इज चार्ज विद फीलिंग्स एंड इमोशंस टू मच मटीरियल इन साइड अ मैन नॉट फिजिकली इमोशनली एज वेल साइकोलॉजिकली एज वेल वर्ड्स विद सी ऑर्गेनिक इंटर बिटवीन मैन एंड नेचर दे द सेम थिंग मैन इज नेचर एंड नेचर इज मैन both man and nature are part and parcel of god and both of them are a part of god in allah taala ne create kiya hai nature ko bhi aur insaan ko bhi inki basic qualities ek jaisi hain they are a part of each other the realization of this universal truth gives pleasure to the heart and to the mind as well you realize it aapki logic bhi satisfy hoti hai aur aapke emotions bhi satisfy hote hain ki you are a part of nature and the nature is a part of you and both of you are part of the biggest being of all the god and when you realize this truth and poetry and poetry alone would help you um get to this truth science would not help you achieve this goal it would not tell you how to understand god it would maybe lead you to the fact that god exists it maybe leads you to the fact that um there is a power that controls everything it might tells you a few more thing but it would not lead you to believe this फिर जो इशू था वो अस्पत के साथ वो आ गया था सब्जेक्ट मैटर ऑफ पोइट्री का जो नेक्स्ट चीज उसने एक्सप्लेन करनी थी अपने प्री फेस में सो वो अस्पत कंसिडर्ड दैट मैन इज द मोस्ट सुटेबल एंड फिट सब्जेक्ट ऑफ पोइट्री कॉम्पोजिशन एंड ही फेल्ट दैट इफ अ पोइट डिड नॉट लीव बिहाइंड अ प्राउड रिकॉर्ड ऑफ क्रिएटिव वर्क डीलिंग विद ह्यूमन लाइफ ही वॉज नॉट वर्दी टू बी रैंक अमंग द फर्स्ट रेट पॉइंट ही बिलीव दैट मैन हैज टू बी द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द poetry and if he thinks that a person a poet has not written enough about man if man has not been in uh, been the um, main uh, topic of his poetry then that poet does not deserve to be ranked as uh, uh, as a poet as one of the greatest poets so he believes ki insaan jo hai wo important hai humanist approach thi iski so for his poetic inspiration he turned to man few modern poets have embodied in their works whether by statement or by implication so firm a sense of the dignity or worth of the common individual man for him man was important human being a uh, koi prince koi king koi noble koi koi bhi aur nahi koi bhi insaan mazdoor chimney sweep beggar reaper anyone was important man was important the individual man was important uski dignity pe uski emotional state pe uski psychological well being pe his aim was to provide pleasure to that man to understand that man and to talk about that man that individual man with the capital m and a capital a and a capital n focus on him usse pehle bahut se bahut hi kam poets hain jinhone insaan pe is tarah focus kiya hai words with realized that essential passion of human uh, heart exists in the greatest state of simplicity in the humble and rustic condition as compared to the sophisticated city life ye wahi baat hai ki jo insaan ki andruni uh, simplicity hai jo uske andruni jazbaat hain jo uski in- internal passions basic passions and basic feelings hain wo rustic life mein zyada samne aati hain zyada clear hoti hain zyada pure hoti hain the elementary human feelings are more accurately contemplated and um they are contemplated more forcefully as well because us pe baki asrat nahi hote us pe baki factors involved nahi hote us pe baki factors asar andaaz nahi ho rahe hote uh, in the rustic life the country life ye gaon ki zindagi mein ye sare factors zyada achhi tarah observe hote hain zyada forceful hote hain zyada zor se samne aate hain zyada numaya hote hain 
communicated in humble and rustic communication uh, conditions of life theek hai in mein ye sare emotions aap zyada achhi tarah communicate bhi kar sakte hain in the scenario of the essential passions and elementary feelings of man existed in a condition of free association they have to exist freely the emotions have to exist freely they do not need to attach themselves to anything jab greed ambition material objects ye cheeze nahi hoti to ye passions jo hain they exist freely words with argues that the manner of rustic life which originate from the elementary feelings are more durable and can be easily comprehend kyunki wo simple origin hota hai logon ka kyunki unki life simple hoti hai kyunki wo purest of the feelings they have so that is why the unka mannerism hota hai ye jo unki baatein bhi hoti hai wo bhi simple hoti hai they not double meaning they do not have you know they don't play games in other words jo hote na ki double edged baatein karna baat aise karna jiske do matlab ho kehna kuch aur matlab kuch aur ho to aise logon ko assess karna zyada aasan hota hai aise logon ki baaton pe aapko bahut zyada gaur nahi karna padta aapko uski implications dekhni padti in rustic condition the human passions are associated with the beautiful and permanent form of nature and as such a nobler and lasting as compared to the passions of men belonging to the sophisticated societies it's the same thing again ke unki passions are the noble hoti hain unki passions are the lasting hoti hain permanent hoti hain zyada der ke liye hoti hain zyada qabil e izzat hoti hain they have this and um, nobility honorable hoti hain zyada instead of people living in the cities cities ke logon ke bare mein it's commonly said ke they they mean and they mean spirited without this inexhaustible source objective beauty in the conditions of life no beauty of language or thought can develop because nature has so much beauty in it because it's an inexhaustible source jo kabhi khatam nahi ho sakta jo continue rehta hai jisme har waqt har roz subah se leke raat tak there are different um uh, there are different uh, depictions of beauty all the time and if there's so much beauty around you it's difficult not to get affected by it and it's difficult not to make it a part of your own poetry wordsworth has used language and situations from low and rustic life because low and rustic life man is more simple more direct nearer to his elemental passions and less affected and artificial in the way he expresses his passion the same thing that he is going to be more real he's going to be more uh, articulate and um, articulate and he's going to be more articulate uh, or less artificially poetry does not require specifically poetic subjects wohi baat hai ki he does not need this he does not need to have specific subjects to write poetry he does not deal with the grand and the dignified or the sensational but the permanent enduring interests of human heart it has to deal with something that touches the human heart that touches the human emotion he does not need ye koi yellow journalism nahi hai ki jisme aap bahut sensational khabrein likhenge ya koi teen char bande marenge ya phir यू नो द थ्रिलिंग न्यूज जो होती है थ्रिलर थ्रिलर जो नॉवल्स होते हैं जासूसी नॉवल टाइप की चीजें होती हैं आपको वो एलिमेंट्स डालने की जरूरत ही नहीं पड़ेगी पोएट्री इज समथिंग दैट इज गोइंग टू कम फ्रॉम द हार्ट एंड इज गोइंग टू टच द हार्ट नेचर एग्जिस्ट इन द प्योर एंड एलिमेंटल स्टेट इन द मिडिस्ट ऑफ नेचर मैन इज इट एज बेस्ट वेन ही लिव्स अ लाइफ ऑफ प्राइमरल सिंप्लिसिटी इन कॉन्स्टेंट कम्यूनियन विद नेचर the father he travels away from nature the more miserable he becomes jitna wo nature ke kareeb hai utna zyada insaan khush rehta hai jitna wo nature se dur jata hai wo miserable hota jata hai because uski passions uski emotions uski integrity sab cheeze compromise hoti hain man is at best when he lives near nature this is what words was believe and this is why what he is based his poetry upon so this is about all we're going to discuss his theory of diction and a few other things and we're going to summarize uh entire uh, preface to the lyrical ballad in the next chapter